Hey guys, welcome to the YouTube channel. You can learn a lot about someone from their favourite James Bond movies. James Bond has been around cinema so long now that many people grew up on it. Many people have their favourites. There are how many movies to choose from? Countless. I mean, I'm sure people say, oh, I know the number of the Bond movies. There's only 23 of them, 24, whatever it is. I'm sure people will say that in the comments. But, you know, most general people can say, yeah, it's probably in the 20 range. Most people have their favourites. And today you're going to learn my top five Bond movies. And not only that, why I feel they're the best five Bond movies, for me at least. Now, this is subjective. Everybody has their favourite Bond movies. Everybody has different favourites. But I'm going to start with my number five. So these are in order. And I'm ranking them based on what I feel is significant about them. So the first one is License to Kill. Timothy Dalton was a very underrated Bond, and I know a lot of people say he got two movies, he had Living Daylights as well. But for me, License to Kill showed the range of Timothy Dalton. It showed what a type of Bond he is. And I know not everyone understands that Timothy Dalton... Look, he had two movies, so a lot of people say, oh, he wasn't a Roger Moore, he wasn't a Sean Connery. He wasn't even a Daniel Craig or Pierce Brosnan. But, or George Lazenby. Like, George Lazenby, I don't rank in this, so there is no George Lazenby movie in this top five. But, I think Dalton is so underrated. I think, out of all the movies, License to Kill is like, look, it has impact. But it's also, I feel like, it's the one for me that screamed, that's James Bond. Living Daylight, it was like, oh, this is a pretty good action movie. He's got James Bond, yeah, I can see it, yep. But when you used to watch this one, it's just Dalton is Bond. I'll just put it that way. Very good movie. Love License to Kill. And for that, it's number five. Next one, number four, is Moonraker. Now, Moonraker is obviously an iconic movie. I personally like the interactions between Roger Moore and Jaws. Like, the Jaws character in this. A lot of people know the Iron Jaw and that, and a lot of people understand what this movie is about. But it's one of those iconic movies as well. It's one of those ones that really grab you and you say, Roger Moore, yes, that is a great movie. And you might say, now I had to really edge this one out. I had to really say, is this better than Octopussy? And I wanted to try to keep a balance. So I was like, yes, it is. A lot of people might think that's a controversial opinion. But Moonraker for me is one that when I go to a Roger Moore Bond movie and I want to watch Roger Moore, this is typically the one I choose. And not far behind that is probably Octopussy. So I think this is one of those movies that it's in my favorites for a reason. It's one of the go-tos for a reason. It's a great Bond movie. Roger Moore is amazing in it. And for me, it is the one I go, I think of straight away when I think Roger Moore Bond, I straight away think of, oh yeah, Jaws, he fought the Jaws in that one. This is, this one is in number four, for that reason. Now you might think, oh, okay, he's ranked Moonraker higher, you haven't done any Sean Connery yet, but Connery's going to be later. The next movie might shock some people, because universally, look, it has its hits and misses. I get it's not for everyone. But I feel it's the one that really got me into Bond. It's the one I grew up on. Goldeneye. How can you go wrong with Goldeneye? This is the one for me that's like, Pierce Brosnan was kind of the center P, like the center ground between a Roger Moore and a Sean Connery. He had, he didn't really have much Dalton aspects in his character, but he, I mean, you could say he did have some, but for me, it felt like the nice balance between a Timothy Dalton, uh, between a Roger Moore and a Sean Connery. So for that, I think this movie is so iconic to the 90s. And look, say what you will about the plot of the movie. Say what you will about, oh, it's not that great. This, that, you're only choosing it for Nintendo 64. <laughs> the Nintendo 64 movie uh, game of this is great. It's one of the most iconic games ever made on in my view, but the movie is really good as well. And I love that whole For England, James. Like, uh, I mean, Sean Bean. We get it. 
I noticed when I'm editing the video together that I've said Sean Connery when I'm talking about GoldenEye. I actually meant Sean Bean. So when you hear me say Sean Connery during this next little segment, I'm actually referring to Sean Bean in GoldenEye. Spoiler alert! Did you know that Sean Bean dies in this movie? Big surprise! <laughs> Ten people in the comments are going to be like, Oh, how dare you spoil? Sean Connery died! Spam it in the comments just to confuse people. When they come to this video and don't watch the whole content, they're going to come in and say, Oh, what a spoiler! Everyone knows Sean Connery dies. He dies in everything he's in. Or well, just about everything. I know someone will say, He didn't die in that one movie! He didn't die in The Martian! <laughs> but you understand what I'm saying. He retired in The Martian. That's close enough. But... Yeah, I love GoldenEye. It's one of those great movies that actually got me into Bond. I remember going to the video shop and renting this multiple times when it was out. And it was just one of those movies that really is like, yep, I can see Pierce Brosnan as James Bond. I can see what type of Bond he is. Now, obviously, after that, he did more Bond movies, and I started thinking, he's still James Bond. I mean, there's a certain aspect where I was like, okay, it's kind of going downhill rather than upwards. But... For that, this is number three. Now you can kind of see a trend going on here. I've kind of been going towards different Bonds for my favourites. And the last two are different Bonds as well. So two I haven't talked about. Obviously, George Lazenby's not in this collection. I know all due respect to George Lazenby, he also played Bond. But I have to make the unfortunate decision of do I put Daniel Craig above Sean Connery or do I put Sean Connery above Daniel Craig. And in my view, both of them are on, both are on the same level, or at least very close. But I have ranked it. Casino Royale is number two. And why did I put this as number two? It is every bit as good as I think it is. It's every bit what I look towards. Now, obviously, as I mentioned, I felt Pierce Brosnan's bond went downhill after a certain point. Goldeneye was the high point for me and it kind of went downhill. This went uphill, like this is where it started. And you might say, oh, but what about Skyfall? Well, we wouldn't have had Skyfall without Casino Royale. And out of all the Bond movies, this is the one I tend to watch the most in terms of, in my player, even more than so than number one. But it is one of my favorite Bond movies. Daniel Craig, obviously I can't say anything that I can't say anything about Bond that hasn't been said about, like, Daniel Craig's Bond. Like, oh, he's great. Oh, he's too, too too terrible. He's too bad. It's not the right balance of Bond in this. But for me, it was that sort of not Bond that made him so such a good Bond. He wasn't trying to be Roger Moore. He wasn't trying to be Sean Connery. He wasn't trying to be Pierce Brosnan or Timothy Dalton or so on. And you might say he took aspects from all of them. And that's the truth. He took aspects from all the Bonds and made his Bond. And I feel like that is the way to play Bond. I feel like that's the way Bond should be. And for that reason, Casino Royale, number two. Now, I did say I represented most Bonds on this list. I just about all of the Bonds on this list. And I, there's one Bond I've left out, Sean Connery. Now, Sean Connery is, in my view probably the best overall Bond. He's the most iconic one. It's like, obviously, you can say Roger Moore's in that conversation as well. Daniel Craig's in that conversation. But for me, it's this movie that really solidifies him as the definitive Bond. Goldfinger. How do you, how do you go beyond Goldfinger? And as I said, I would put, this narrows Casino Royale just by a little bit. It narrows it out by a little bit. But this is, to me, definitive Bond. This is the one most people think of. It's the one I grew up on Austin Powers, as I mentioned in a previous video. It's the one a lot of aspects of Austin Powers was based on. And you might say they took things from Moonraker. They took things from everywhere. But this is, to me, the definitive Bond. There is no better Bond than this. And it's the... It's the iconic Bond. It's the one most people point to and says, Goldfinger. It had Shirley Bassey. Is it Shirley Bassey? Is that... Oh, what's her name? Is it Shirley Bassey? I feel like it's Shirley Bassey. But 
it had that iconic gold finger, you know, it's like, it had the whole setup, it had the whole, I mean, it had the whole iconic opening, it had everything you could imagine from Bond movie. And you might say, oh, but this Bond movie before it had it, and that had that aspect, and whatever. But for me, this is the one that I go to. This is, between Casino Royale and Goldfinger, I think I've played this a bit more overall. But in the past couple of years, I've played Daniel Craig's one probably more than this one. But over the span of time, I've probably watched this one more times than that. And it's what, for a reason. It's one of the most iconic. It's one that I really get into. It's one that I can, I can feel this bond. I can feel the 60s vibes. I can feel everything about this bond. And you just see how good Sean Connery was. When, they were, when he was firing on all cylinders as Bond. This was, to me, the Bond. I mean, everyone was a Bond, but this was the Bond. And, yeah, I can't rank this one high enough. But as I said, a very, very close second was Casino Royale. And then, say what you will about how I ranked the rest of them. These are my top five. And it's subjective to change. So... I may feel the next year or two years on that, hey, Octopussy is actually a better movie overall. Because as you re-watch these films, you start to learn little things about, yes, Daniel Craig, for example, the little, the gritting aspects to this Bond really made him a great Bond. And you look at Roger Moore and I'm like, yeah, he is better than Roger Moore in my view. Don't get me wrong, Roger Moore was a freaking awesome Bond. But I tend to gravitate towards a, a Daniel Craig or a Sean Connery. And, you know, even Pierce Brosnan, it's a different flavor. It's like, it's almost like Roger Moore, but it's a different flavor. And I love all these movies. A lot of the Bond movies, I've got the whole collection off camera, but I love all the Bond movies. So anyone who says, oh, you're just doing whatever, how dare you choose that one? It's subjective to me. These are the ones I go towards. And you don't have to agree with them, but there is a comment section down there for a reason if you don't agree with them. Let me know your top five of Bond. I want to hear what you think about Bond. And not, don't just tell me your top five. Tell me why you love your top five. Why are they your go-tos? I think Bond is one of those characters that stands the test of time. And I also watched everyone get up in arms when they were saying, we're going to go a female Bond for the next Bond. And everyone just got up in arms like, oh, and how can they do that? <laughs> But then I'm like, would it be the worst thing? I mean, yeah, yeah, it probably would be the worst thing, actually. But, yeah, because, look, I don't know how they'd make a female bond, but I would, I would at least be, on a curiosity, check it out. I don't think it would work. I think it would be like a, a George Lazenby, just one movie and done. But it would be interesting to see a, a female bond, I think, just to see it fail at the box office. But... I'm not, what if it succeeds? What if it is a good Bond? What if, what if every female viewer who's like, I don't want to watch the men Bond, goes to watch the female Bond and then it's the biggest box office hit in the world? They're going to make more of those things. I mean, us as the casual fans are going to be like, oh, how dare they do that to Bond? But <laughs> it's just hilarious. And they're actually taking bets on who's the favourite to play Bond. Everyone's saying Henry Cavill's number one and then that, um, the guy who played, um, oh, he played Kenny Von Erich in the um, Iron Claw. He, I don't forget his name. Aaron Johnson or something? Aaron Taylor Johnson or something? So hey guys, I'm just filming my Bond video. I just finished wrapping it and I just realised I made a big factual error in this. Um, I said Aaron Taylor Johnson, which he would. He plays Craven, obviously. He, he could play a really good Bond. But it's not the one I was thinking of. I was mixing up the names. Jeremy Allen White is the one I was trying to think of. So in this video, while you're watching the rest of this, you can laugh about, oh, factual error. And then um, I've heard everyone mentioned in this thing, I've heard just about every name you can Im imagine. Tom Hiddleston's in there and like, everyone has been mentioned that you can think of in Hollywood. Everyone wants Bond, don't get me wrong. Everyone wants Bond. But it's hard to say who the next Bond will be. I mean, I think Henry Cavill would make a good Bond, but it's really hard to say. But because, look, Henry Cavill is in his 40s now. They need to look at this as how old are they going to get it to the next 20 odd years, 15 odd years. Daniel Craig, you might think, oh, Daniel Craig was only a Bond for so many years. 
He's been playing that character since at least 2005 when they were filming it, 2005, 2006. It came out in 07, but he's been playing the character for probably 20 years at this point. And you've got to think of it as, okay, who are they going to get the most, the most shelf life out of? Who are they going to get the most mileage out of? They have to go a young Bond, not too young, because otherwise the audience won't take him seriously. But I am sort of seeing it as Aaron Taylor Johnson may get that role. I can't, yeah, I can't see anyone doing it better. But yeah, I don't know, or as long. I mean, I could see Henry Cavill doing it better for a couple of movies. But it depends what sort of Bond they want. If they want like a Pierce Brosnan Bond, then yeah. Let me know what you think in the comments, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.